Hello viewers, we are here again. This is another episode with um, this wonderful couple. Um, I mean, I've known them for a while. He's a pastor and um, with one of the leading churches, um, Kingdom Ways to be precise. And he has this beautiful woman as his wife. I mean, you would love to meet them. Very amazing people. And today I decided to bring them on this show in order to use their story to inspire somebody that is out there and i hope by the end of today's um, episode you will be inspired so please let's meet you pastor thank you my name is pastor rapo luchuku okk and this is love is a lovely wife my name is pastor mrs amaka pastor mrs amaka okay so we have two pastors here i mean are we not blessed to have two people that are pastors here on our show on our show i mean it's a wonderful one thank you and you guys are welcome to this show it's just a quick one we will quickly go into what we have today but before we go into the thing we have properly we'll just play a little game um, i mean if you look in front of you you have exercise book there and a pen please can you just pick your exercise book and your pen please okay mm. question comes out you should be telling me about your husband and you should be telling me about her. So whatever question I ask, the answer is not for you, yourself, it's for your husband. Like tell me about him. And at the end of the day, we collect and then we can see if we have the same answers coming from both of you. No eye signal, just face your book and that's it. No cheating, no expo. And so the first question says, what's your spouse's favorite color? Don't look at him, just right. We're in examination hall. Your spouse's favorite color. Okay, if we're done with that, what's your spouse's favorite food? Who cuts the shot in the house? Who cuts the shot in the house? Who is the boss? <sighs> Who sleeps on the right side of the bed? The right side of the bed. Who sleeps there? Two more questions to go. Who is the first to say, I'm sorry? The first to say I'm sorry. Who is the patient one? Who is the patient one? So once you're done, you just drop your exercise book on the table. Thank you. Uh, who is the patient one? That's the last question. So if you don't Thank you. Um, <laughs> I like that. I mean, um, it's, it goes a long way to say that both of you know yourself to an extent, which a lot of couples don't, you know, have. They can't boast of it today. So we just do it. Each time we have a we have couple in the house, we always want to do just this little test to see how much they both know themselves. So you guys called very well. I mean, 95% is a good man. So that's a nice one. So back to what we have for today. But before we go into what we have for today, we're going on a short break. Thank you. See you when we're back. In a world where hunger prevails, the fate of the family rests on the shoulders of... I'm home! You wanna know a product that is satisfying Mommy! Royal Oats is made from a rich variety of healthy nutrients to give you the very best nourishment and it comes in different parts Oat milk flour, porridge oat, jumbo oat, fufu fufu Royal Oats It's healthy with Royal Oats So delicious Royal Oats Oh what a magical feeling Royal Oats. Eat well, feel good. 
we're back again. Like I said, that we're going to go strictly into the main business of the day, which is actually to have an insight into our guests, I mean, I mean married life. They are, they've been married for seven years. Madam, I will start with you. You said you guys have been married for seven years. You're actually having your wedding anniversary I'm next sure. month. Whoa, seven years is a lot of time. Like, because marriage now is, um, is I see it as two years contract. Let's sign these papers, two years, everybody should go their way. What has been the secret? Seven years. Thank you, Ma, for this uh, opportunity. Um, my marriage has been a successful because God has been with me. Those seven years is not just by my strength or because of what I know, it's just God. These seven years has been God of the way. My testimony, the things I see, it's just God that is helping me. You know, as a woman, you need a lot of wisdom to put in your marriage for your marriage to work. So I think God is my testimony. Okay, so from what you're saying, God has played a major part in your marriage, obviously, and you as a human being has applied wisdom where wisdom has where wisdom is actually necessary because from what you're saying that wisdom is very important for us to be able to build the marriage the way we want it to be and in your mind what you have in your mind is success that there is no failure it has to be success right that's a good one pastor seven years seven years seven years whoa seven years and you carry the baggage for seven years. You know, men, men used to call us baggage. Like, we are a whole lot of trouble. So, how has it been? What has kept you going? Women are not baggage. Okay, thank you for correcting that. So, men, have you heard it? We earned baggage. Women are gifts. Whoa. From God. I'm blushing. Uh, because, you know, the Bible says that he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor yeah. from God. So it means that for you to find a wife, you are found favor. Exactly. So she is the favor I've been looking for. Whoa, so he's since, been looking for. Since I found her, <laughs> I found favor. That's a nice one. So I'm... it has been God all the way, just like she has rightly said. God enabled us to come together. God enables our paths to cross together. It is God all the way. That's a good one. I mean, um, for the fact you see her as that favor that you've been looking for, I just wish men would start seeing their wives that way. Like that, um, we, we are something that that is special that happened to them. Fair you understand? Because I believe if men start seeing women that way, the violent thing, the beating thing, and all that will not happen when a man does not treat his wife properly, right? His prayers will be hindered. Will be hindered. Yes. I want you to throw more light on this because a lot of Christian homes, they are believing and trusting God for something. And could this be a problem? Why it is not coming? So that we can understand it, you know, like yes. we can go back to the drawing board and see. A man listening to you now should go back to the drawing board from what you have said, you know, and say, okay, if my wife is this, pastor said my wife is this. Or his wife is this and if I'm not treating my woman right my prayers could be hindered because of the love you have for the, for your wife it covers it you understand what I'm saying so you know you know there is this general saying that there is this general saying from women you know no woman would like to be treated as a slave mm -hmm. no woman would like to be handled as someone that does not have value mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying there? Mm -hmm. you know just like the Bible says something it said wife submit to your husband yeah he said to us, men, love your wife. Now, the submission there does not mean that you are a slave. Exactly. When the Bible says submit to your husband, what it just means is this. Your husband has a vision he's running with. Mm -hmm. Your husband is on a mission. So you are like a sub to the mission of your husband. You are like a sub. Just like if you study mathematics, there is a pastor, set theory. Pastor, pastor, wait. <laughs> Sorry. I just I saw that you coined out something now. Sub. So the mission, please, pastor, take it again. 
because I, I am this is my first time of hearing it this way. I've always heard submit, submit, submission, submit. I haven't heard somebody that divided it sub to a mission. Okay, Throw yeah, more what, light, what it means is okay. <laughs> now, I, I, I want to pick it from the set theory. Okay, if you did mathematics very well, I, I wasn't good at it. Okay. Anyway. When you see when, when you are studying a set theory, that's what is called a universal set. Okay. And that's what okay. is called a subset. That's what is, is you know. Is, is, that's what is called a subset. So women, by submission, it simply means that you are the subset of the universal set. Now, by sub to the mission of your husband, it simply means you got your vision. Your husband has his vision, but both of you are running towards the same direction. Because when you have a different vision, that is when it's become a division. Pastor, I'm going to ask you a very, <laughs> very like. I'm going to ask you a question that, I mean, is bothering me now from what you have said. Because you are talking as a man, I'm a woman here. And there are some men that don't have vision, like really, like you have said. And they don't have the dreams or the idea. They're just there. Okay. And this woman has it and is working. Please, in this interpretation that you've given to submission... How do we like marry okay. the two of let them? Me, because let me let me throw a I'm light misplaced on now. It. Okay. Now, what I teach is that the first thing Sorry, we're gonna to come to you soon, but sorry we are with him because he's giving me more confusion and we need to solve it. <laughs> yes, sorry, pardon me. What but... I what I what I teach is that <laughs> yes. before a man will get married, before if you're a woman, before you think of marrying a man, number one is that you as a woman you must have a direction okay. where you are heading to in life. Yeah. Then you don't marry a man that is heading to opposite direction. Okay. So the... the man himself should have a direction where he's heading to. Okay. Then he also will not marry a woman that is not heading towards the direction. For example, and if you're going to Babalada, for example, you marry a woman that is either going to Kuche. Are you get what okay, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That that Kuche, is, that you, what I'm saying? Yes. you don't marry a woman that is going, going to Suba. Or Suleja. Or Suleja. Are you get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. So you marry you marry a woman that is going towards your direction. So it has to start from the beginning. From the beginning. You right? Yeah, because we need to get it clear. Mm. It starts from the beginning. From the moment you are searching. Yes. You need to get somebody that is thinking alike. One more. You know, you guys are moving towards, oh, this is my dream. I'm dreaming to travel to Oka. Oh, even me, I'm thinking of going to Benue. You know, it's the same as it's somehow the you can extend from Benue to Oka and we find ourselves the same place. So it has to start from the beginning. That is what you're saying. Yeah. Good. You said when you were trying to get married, you had to start reading all some things and all that. And from your reading or research or discussions or probably seminars you were attending because of marriage, preparing yourself were you also preparing to go on this journey like where you found your so your husband today he is a pastor today you didn't marry him as a pastor i guess no, I didn't marry him. good were you preparing yourself did you see it coming because from what he's saying he's saying that you guys should be on the same track like almost the same track right did you see it coming today is it that a yes or a no okay ma'am did you see yes. it coming? You saw yes. it coming? Yes. Okay, fine. So were you pre preparing yourself towards that journey? Yes, I was preparing for it. Somehow, Even somehow, before you got married to him? Yes, before I got married to him. But I didn't even know I would marry a pastor. But my dream then was to marry a, a man that has fear of God. Okay. That is my first priority. Okay, so you were so looking you know, out for that. Yes, a, a man that will, maybe, that will bring me spiritual because I want somebody that will ginger me in the things of God. Like okay. That will make me to pray more than I used to you pray You used to before. pray before. Yes. Okay, so you had it. So it was like two of you traveling the same lane. Because you were looking for a man that was going to support you in your Christian life, in your faith. And lo and behold, there's somebody that was out there he knew he had the score. Pastor, you knew you had the score. You knew you were going to go into this journey. Did you brief her that at some point before you got married that you were thinking of this journey? Uh, well, I did not brief her in the <laughs> beginning. Okay. I didn't brief her in the beginning. But um, 
I think she was able to decode what has been encoded. <laughs> decode <laughs> what has been encoded. Oh my God. First of all, I don't like using all this your big grammar because next you have to explain it. So, you know me, I'm not understanding. So, I'm believing my, my viewers are not understanding. Please, can you just... Okay, I think she 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 read the handwriting on the wall. Okay. Okay, there was handwriting on the wall. Yeah, she, okay, she had to see it. She read and it. She, and she understood it. Very well. So, she gave you all the support that you needed. Complete. Because I see her as a shy type. I, I think she's a... Oversight. Yeah, so how is she doing it? Because you're a pastor, she... I'm doing my work. <laughs> what work? <laughs> she's oversight. So I'm removing the shy. Okay, so you have to take off that that is yeah. not needed in her, which is the, the shyness. The and software. The software in her that is sponsoring the shy nature. That's to... what I beg you. <laughs> <laughs> not to confuse me. <laughs> when you explain it something, which one is software again? <laughs> oh my god, this is this is crazy. Okay. I'm trying to edit the system. Okay, you edit. Oh shit. Okay, let me not say ah, oh it. Oh my god. I'm trying to format the system. Oh my god. Oh my the god. software that brings shine. Okay. The software that will make her bold. Okay, so like now, what Pastor is trying to say is he's trying to change you, right? Yes. How are you coping with that change? This is not you. Yes. Not necessarily he's, trying to change her. No, you're changing her, Pastor. You are form you are formatting her. So format you the are system, you are shutting the system down and taking out something. When you are formatting the system, you don't change the system. Okay, okay the system is still there, but you're removing something. There. You're removing something you about another fine thing. Tuning the system. Okay, so the fine tuning, my <laughs> sister. How are you coping with this fine tuning? Because it's obvious this is not you. You're not the type that wants to come out. And because we of all you 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 see yourself doing today, where you find yourself today. You can't just be at the background again. You have to be at the forefront. So how has it been? Because marriage today, a lot of people tell you the changes we see in it, we, I cannot cope with it because this is not me. I'm an um, extrovert. My husband is introvert. And all of a sudden, he wants me to be introvert because he's introvert. I cannot cope. You see the man say, I'm an extrovert and my wife wants me to be introvert. I can, you know, things like that. So we, we are laughing over it, but it's really something. It's a big deal in some people's homes. So how are you, you know, managing it? Somebody formatting and changing and redefining you. I how think, are you? I think that is how God wants it because if yeah, a, a gentle person marry me, I'm not sure the marriage will be that sweet. Yeah. Because as a marriage, you need to have one has to be an extrovert and the other one has to be an introvert for the marriage to work. So I, I am a prior type. Yes, you don't need to tell me, it's obvious. <laughs> Looking yeah. at you, instead of going to the church to join the choir to sing. Because you're shy, because you don't want a day that will tell you to stand in front of the whole church and then you sing. But today you're doing it very well because he has come to like help you out. That's a good one. I mean, Pastor, like you said, you're doing your job. Very wonderful job you're doing. It's for you to do this job, it meant that you took out time to observe who she is. I'm still even observing. <laughs> Pastor, you have to keep observing, obviously. But at least the one that you have found out, <laughs> you know, my my husband used to say something when you fight, when you come across something that is difficult for you to to do, you troubleshoot. That before you draw, before you troubleshoot, to shoot for too long, you will find a solution to it. So you've been doing troubleshooting and finding out things that you need to adjust, and you're still on the business. So you doing all this. Because some men might not be patient to do this. You agree with me, right? Yeah. Are you patient enough? Like, at some point, do you run out of patience? Yes. Okay. As a human. Yeah. Naturally, I am impatient. Oh, that's a problem. Naturally. Okay. But no matter impatient you are, that is why. Let me use an illustration to answer what you just asked me. A young guy was um, insulted by a woman, by a lady abused and the guy went ahead and began to deal with the woman so the question i someone asked was this person married the answer is no okay because if he was married if he was married he, was, he, he must have, have learned how to handle the woman <laughs> and he's not even preparing to get married okay <laughs> you get what yes so marriage is a journey yeah it's not a destination it's a journey and the journey of marriage is a journey of wisdom and there are series of wisdom that are involved in marriage. You need wisdom to communicate. 
you need wisdom to manage your home. And there are a series of management that is involved. For example, there's wisdom for financial management. Yeah. There's wisdom for bedroom management. Exactly. There's wisdom for children management. Yeah. There's wisdom for in-law management. You, you understand what I'm saying? Well, so you need is a job of wisdom. So you as a man that got married to a woman, you need to be praying for wisdom. Because you need a whole lot of wisdom from God to be able to manage a lot of things. Because as it was when both of you have not started bearing children, it's not the way it would be when Once children the children start coming. coming exactly. And when the children are young, it's not the way it would be when the children have grown. Exactly. So in every stage, you need wisdom. It's really, it's really yes. a journey. It's yeah, a journey. I, you yeah, need I wisdom. Agree with you. In every stage, you need wisdom. Yes. So that's why I said marriage is like a school. There is no graduate in the school of marriage. There is no graduate. Everybody is a student. Yes. As I'm talking to you now, I am a student. Of course. In the school of marriage. But the best truth of a marriage is for us to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us. That's all. Yeah, he said allow the Holy Spirit to teach us. So as the Holy Spirit made the journey very smooth for you, very easy for you. Yes. Like he said he's a very impatient person. I can imagine. Naturally, that's who he is. Impatient. Whoa, I'm a very impatient person, but luckily for me, I have a man that understands me. So I'm just trying to turn the What's table the around. Is my husband is a very patient person? And you are patient too. Impatient, impatient person. I can I can flare up. I can bring down this roof that now is, once it starts. That is, that is, that is but he understands me very well. Like very. So sometimes when I'm done with my grace, I sit <laughs> down and ponder on what I have done, and I just imagine if it were to be him. That is impatient, and I'm the patient one. Can I take this rubbish? Do you understand? So, for somebody who is impatient, and you happen to be his wife, hello, how are you doing it? Because you're so calm, you look like somebody that can hardly talk. I don't know if I'm maybe exaggerating, but tell us. What's the secret? Because there are a lot of women that are there. I can't advise those women because I'm the one that is impatient. <laughs> so, how are you dealing with this? Okay. Aside the Holy Spirit, what is your own... <laughs> yes, because sometimes I say, leave Holy Spirit alone. That is the one that we do as human beings. So, aside the Holy Spirit and God, what do you do when he starts? When he releases that venom, what do you do? How do you go about it? Okay. Practical. At times, like when we have issues like this, and he started maybe breaking, what I normally do is just to leave him alone. Okay. I don't talk. As a wise woman, you don't talk when your husband is talking. And he is, when he gets angry, here, yes, it's as if the whole world is coming. You don't need to explain that part for so, me. I told, I told you that I know, what, so, I know, I know what it's like. So what I normally do. Okay. Keep quiet. Just to keep quiet yes. and just allow him to calm down. Okay. Maybe later. Because later he went up. <laughs> he has to calm down. Obviously. Okay. At the end of everything. Okay. I'll go to him. We will talk. You know, when he's very happy, he's in good mood. I will just meet him. Tell him this is how it should be. And what the the aspect I love in my husband is he understands very easily. You understand when he comes okay. down when when he's fine yes so you you're you're, 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 you're actually you're telling a woman that is that has the same situation as your yours that the secret is just be mute keep quiet allow him to boil fry bake cool down relax and then you observe when he's in i love the word you said you said something about when he's in a happy mood, right? So you need to watch. You need to observe. That means you distance yourself. I'm trying to create a scenario because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how my husband does his ease, but I know he manages it very well. In fact, sometimes I tell him, thanks for managing me. Like, thanks for managing my troubles because my troubles can be very big. But from a woman now, you stand afar from what you're telling us, right? You, you don't go close. No. You don't speak. Don't. He's boiling that time. You just allow him. He's talking. But some men will tell you, I'm talking and you're not talking. Do I look stupid to you? Am I crazy? Yeah. So what to be this? Because these things are very difficult. Sometimes I tell women, don't talk when he's talking. Say, hey, if I don't talk, he will start telling me, oh, oh I'm the madman now, talking alone. So respond, respond. 
It depends on the. Okay, so you don't keep quiet at every point. No, there are some times, okay, I so talk. that's where wisdom comes in, right? So you know when to say something, exactly. especially when it is a question. Maybe he's trying to ask questions because it would be stupid of you or that, that person listening and somebody is asking a question out of anger. We kept this shoe here and you are keeping quiet because you want to be a quiet woman. You don't want to talk because he's angry. I think at that point you need to answer, right? You need to say something. Otherwise, he feels stupid. So we need to be, we need to play wisdom in whatever we are doing. Know when to speak. That's what you're trying to say. Because I'm trying to make out exactly what somebody listening should go home with. Know when to speak and speak at the right time so that everybody comes on the same page. Pastor, I'm coming back to you. When you are flaying that your <laughs> scattering that your scatter. <laughs> do, do you know that somehow is having a negative impact in your wife? Because I'm asking this question because I feel that way sometimes. Like I told you, I'm the impatient one. So if you know it has that effect on her, what effort are you making not to find yourself in that mood? Well, um, I would always tell us. I want to learn from you, so what don't, is, don't worry. What the scripture say? <laughs> the Bible says, "Be angry, but sin not." But that does not justify a man flaring up at all times. Okay. You know, there are things you see that a woman is not doing right. You overlook. Okay, you overlook. Yeah. Okay. Example, yeah. just one example, please. Now, for example, now, when maybe every man should, even if you are not a patient type, you should learn to understand that women take some time in preparing. <laughs> so, oh my God. <laughs> so okay. If, for example, now, if you are going to go to a journey by two o'clock, okay. you she tell the woman it's six o'clock. In the morning, so that she will begin by six in the morning. Oh my God, that. that's wickedness, Pastor. Now, I can't. <laughs> you understand? What? No, no, yes. no. I, no. You tell her. So, uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is that then, when every man, when you flare up to a woman, it's not even good for a man to flare up. Yeah, because it's negative. Impact. It's not good. It's not good. But in everything you do, you must have a control. Okay. You must have control. Let. For example, now, you know, there are men that um, love to shout. There are men that love to talk when they are angry. There are men that love to keep quiet when they are angry. So if you are a talking type when you are angry, be very careful so that you don't abuse the woman. Season your words. Season your words. Pastor, we're going to come back to this. We'll go on a quick break and we'll be back shortly. Yes. Remember what before we went on our break, Pastor was saying something about men seasoning their words. Pastor, I you know you were on that topic when I just said pause yes, and yes. let's come back. Yes. Really, what's what's that about seasoning your words? Very simple. Mind the kind of words you use. Okay, but when you, you say seasoning, you don't because you are you are angry. You know, I'm not trying to encourage men to be angry. Okay. No, 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 no. But at times, once in a while, you. you you will get offended. Yeah, things happen. And so, but whenever you are offended, you need to mind the kind of words you use. Yeah, That's because somebody I mean, right? said mm -hmm. your words are like are words written on marble. Yeah, they're like you seeds. can't you can't clean them. Yeah, it's just and, there. And you know you know women are processors. Whatever you give to your wife, she, she processes, processes it. it. 
and gives you a result. The outcome immediately. That's true. Give no wasting woman. time. Give a woman this seed. Woman sperm. Give a woman, she will give you a baby. Yeah. Any word you give to the woman, she will return it back to you. She will take time and process it. <laughs> but the outcome is actually coming, so you have to wait for it. Yeah, so in order not to get the other outcome, they you make should it be simple. careful the kind of words you use. Because one thing is that, you know, I, I say a lot of things. Because I understand that the entrance gate to the heart of a woman is the ear. If you want to win that woman, Pastor, always speak to the ear of the woman. Hold it there. <laughs> I'm just hearing that word again. The entrance gate to the woman is the ears. Madam. Please tell us how it happens because I am a woman and I don't know if I'm, <laughs> I've heard that word. I know they say the, the way to a man's heart is his stomach. Then now, for a woman, is her ears. Okay. What it means is uh, that women like you. Women like sweet things. Tell a woman sweet things. Women like to hear and uh, call them pet names. Tell them, sweeties, you're my darling, you're my angel. In fact, since I found you, I've never known any sorrow. You will, yeah. so, That is the way, if you want to get a woman, just tell her it's sweet way. Okay. Likewise, men, their trust gets to the to men is their tummy. Give a man food. Good food. Good food. And everything is fine. Thing, yes. Oh, so Pastor, I now know your secret. You tell her things that her ears wants to hear and everything is falling into place you need to teach men these sweet things so because they need to know it a lot of people don't know that they are used to telling women things that are so harsh they are used to breaking women's hearts they're used to telling women making them feel less of themselves i know of a friend that the husband has taken out the self-confidence the self-esteem everything about human being the man has taken it out of the woman just by the words of his mouth the woman does not even believe that anything good can ever come out of her. In fact, sometimes she looks at her children and wonders if she's the one raising them because she cannot believe she has that in her to give her children just because of what the man has limited, you know, reduced her to. So men need to understand this, that we, we work better with what we hear, not what we see. Because some people will tell you, just give her the money, she'll be fine. All she needs from you is is money mm -hmm. so i love what you said and i needed to confirm from her if really that's what you mean and from what she said i think i want to agree with both of you like very well. Very, very well. you know uh, a man that does not romance the wife romance is not actually touching the woman yeah a man that does not romance the wife every woman is a woman Every woman needs romance, and um, most of the times, or very often, a woman is easily romanced by the words of the man. Of so the words, before even going physical self, yeah, before but, touching and so all that. So before you enter there, use your mouth and bring the woman down. Then she's mm. there. So hold it there. <laughs> use your words, use your mouth, and bring her down and get her in the mood. Because we get to hear loads of rape in marriage. And I have said it before in one of my programs that I don't want to believe there's something like rape in marriage. In fact, after that show, I went home, my husband watched it, and he told me, I need you to address your viewers, especially the men, that they need to talk to the woman. That when you want to make out with the woman, you don't just come back and start it. You start from morning and start arranging things, prepping things. You'll be tuning the knob. <laughs> okay, tuning the knob, okay. Start prepping things by waking up in the morning and all of a sudden she's glowing. May you are glowing, you're beautiful. You have just dropped a word and you have gone out. She's going to try everything to make sure that she looks that beautiful by the time you come back and she's prepared her mind he said you can even go further while you are at work you just call and check maybe i just call to say i love you then the woman is head over heels and lo and behold you're just passing your junction and you stop by mesuya and just buy even if it's one thousand naira not even suya you can buy foreign <laughs>
So I love this part because he said it. I told him some other time we're going to talk about it, and thank God you brought it now because it's a problem. I believe because he said he disagrees that a, a man should rape his wife. That women are claiming that men rape them. That if you look at it, sex without consent of the woman is rape. But that there was not supposed to be anything like consent or no consent. If you as a man know your game. You don't need to write application later, baby. I want us to. Oh, you, you don't need to buy phone. It's a direct entry. <laughs> Pastor, let me. Because I don't want you to take me to another place again. I want to now come back to your profession as a pastor. Now, you're a public figure, you're a spiritual father to many. Kingdom Ways Church is a very big church that is doing so well. Um, I learned that you guys have lots of branches here and there, and you have also gone international. And um, by the special grace of God, I think you are the uh, senior pastor in Abuja. In Abuja in the north, yeah. Okay, in the northern, um, in the northern region, um, that's a big position. Uh, if, if you must agree with me, and I don't know how you're doing it. You have this beautiful wife that is at home. You have the church and the audience to attend to. And all that. How is it happening? You know, there is this something I believe. You can't pastor a church if you don't pastor your home. Pastor, I've been begging you to make it it's very easy for me because <laughs> so you can't pastor a church if you don't pastor your home. Now, okay. A pastor is a shepherd. Okay. A pastor is a caretaker. Okay. That's why the Bible says the man that cannot provide for the family is worse than an unbeliever. Some translation will say infidel. So what it means is, before you can pastor a church successfully, you have to pastor your home. Take good care of your home. Take good care of your family. I don't believe, I go them in church and I don't climb mountains. I don't go to mountain to fast. Because what kills home, what especially pastors, is when the pastor is so much concerned about church, 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 spiritual, 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 and the woman is here dying. No, 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 no. It has to be your home first. Because if anything happens to that home, the members will eat. So it has to be your home first. You know, make sure that your wife is satisfied before you can satisfy the church. Make sure you take time to take care of your wife. You understand what I'm saying? Make sure you take your time to take care of your wife. Okay. Don't just wake up and go out like that without making sure that the woman is okay. You know? Because she's your first member. The first member. <laughs> not, the, not, not, not just the first member. She is all, she's everything. She is everything. So you need to take your time and take care of the woman before taking care of the church. Some pastors will say something like, what if the woman is not... Um, what if the woman is so materialistic? She's, she's not, not encouraging me. She's not. She's, she's, not, she's, she's not, not spiritually not inclined. She's not, she's not seeing my dreams. Yes. She she doesn't you want know, to partake in what I'm know. doing. Yeah, that is why you married her. If she's not seeing your dream, open her eyes to see the dream. Because she have to see the dream. You can't force the eyes open. You have to make sure that the eyes are open. She will see your dream if you want her to see it. If you want her to see the dream, you keep on working on her. Because every woman is a raw material. It is what you process in the raw material that you get as a byproduct, as an end product. Yeah. Very true. So you need to keep on working on her. Working on her. My 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 take in this one is that every man, every man of God, every pastor should handle the home. First. The home is the first. Now, for example, let me be practical here. Um the kind of person that is so so real and even if you are real you watch the countenance of your wife don't do anything that will make your wife begin to think otherwise because in as much as you relate with your members in as much as you are a father you are not a father unto women alone you are a father to everybody so but when your fatherhood is directed to one set of people then something is wrong Pastor, hold it there. I need to go to Madame with this thing you have just said now. Yeah, because it's a, it's a very big challenge in our society today. A lot of men of God face this as a challenge. And I sometimes wonder 
what could be in the in the, in the minds of the wives, and it has really um, put you know cracks in some homes. I know a couple of pastors here and there, and I found out that this thing, not being pastor to just the women alone, has brought issues. So I don't know how are you processing it, the women around the pastor, because you know, women, ladies, will always want to see the pastor. They will always believe they have one issue. In fact, a, a lady can have one particular issue 30 times and see pastor 30 times. These things are done in, you know, like in a closet and all that. How comfortable are you? How are you managing it? Because in your mind of mind, you know some are not real. So it's a challenge, I believe. So how are you pulling through with it? How are you doing it? It's a very big challenge. Uh, all those wives have been a pastor's wife. I've seen so many girls. They want to come around the pastor all the time. They want to you know, give me a gift. But what keeps me going, sometimes I, I make sure I ignore those things. Or the kind of text message, like when we started, that was in our you know? I do see some kind of text messages some girls sent to me. I do see some of the gifts, but I'll, sometimes I would like to ask, uh, ask my husband, what is the intention of all these things? Yeah, what's, what's, what's up with all these gifts? What's up with all these text messages? I can imagine. Yes. But one thing that keeps me going is the trust I have for my husband. Okay. I know that he cannot do such a thing, maybe. Back. Okay, that is just the thing. So I there was some level so of much. trust. Yes, that I can even come out to maybe to swear for him that this kind of thing he didn't do it. Okay, you understand? Yes, now that's a good and one. I saw. I, I pray because I know he's a human being. Of course, and I was going to get there. To, you know, do some of the responsibilities I know women do. Like there is something I'm supposed to just see man say that you trust to kill your husband. Because he's seen so many dresses, he sees so many things, he's seen, he's seen them in so many in different shapes. So what I do is to make sure that you're on point as work. well. I do my work. Okay. I give him what he wants, food, sex, food. Okay. Let it not be that there is something he's seen outside that he has never seen. Before. Okay, oh, that, that, oh my God, that's 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 that's, that's a serious war. Like you have to be on your toes there. You just have to. That's what it means. Now, as a pastor's wife, you just have to be on your toes to make sure the pastor is okay. Like I used to tell, I used to tell people. I said, um, men are just like children. You get a child today, maybe a two-year-old child, and he says, "Mommy, I'm hungry." You feed the child. Before you feed the child, probably you must have taught him along the line, never you eat outside, right? Yes. That's what we usually do. Yes. And this boy comes and says, Mommy, I'm hungry. You feed the child and he's overfed and he leaves leftover and goes to play. When that child goes out and the friend says, take, probability of him saying, no, I don't want, is very high, right? Yes. It's not because you said, Mommy, don't take outside. It's because you have fed him. Now, a child comes home and says, Mommy, I'm hungry. And you're like, please excuse me. I'm busy. I'm tired. I can't go and make food for you. I'm this. You just find one flimsy excuse and you know, tells the child to go away. You've sent that child hungry. That same child you have told, never you take something from strangers. If that child goes outside and the friend is eating something and offers him, in fact, he doesn't need to wait for offer. He can actually say, please give me he's asking for that thing not because he did not remember what mommy said but because he was, hungry. he was hungry so i love the fact that you are doing everything possible to take care of pastor while in the house to make sure that everything you think that you need outside is inside the house because women need to understand that sometimes i say the stories of infidelity we hear is as a result of what one person has not done right. I was counseling a couple the other day, and the woman, the man said, she said, I'm sleeping, I, I have a side cheek. I asked the man, be honest with yourself, do you have a side cheek? He said, yes, I have a side cheek. And she gave me the reason to have a side cheek. Mm. And I turned to the woman, 
you're complaining he has a side chick. But you, you gave him every reason to go have a side chick. She was like, how? What did I do? What did I do? And the man says, I can't imagine having my wife. I have a wife. I, 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 I mean, I am not a, a, a divorcee. I am not um, a widow. I have a woman, a wife, life in my house, under my roof, the same bed. And my wife has not slept with me for six weeks. Who does that? Hmm? Yes. And I turned to the woman and I said, is that true? She said, yes, no, but I've not always been in the mood. She was trying to give excuses. And I gave her this scenario of a child being hungry and going outside and looking for food. And she left the office crying. You understand? So I am happy you are doing what you're doing. I mean, keep it up because it is going to go a long way for him in this journey. Pastor, you want to agree with me, right? She prepping you from the house is going a long way for you. Yeah. And people will understand that he doesn't need anything because my wife or his wife is doing just fine. You understand? That's a very good one. And also you observing that your looks matters a lot. Like there was somewhere I went, it was just a little gossip between some of uh, my staff and some uh, clients that we had in my second office the day i went to my garden and the, the the new staff that were employed i wasn't there so when i came they've been hearing madam 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 and eventually madam came visiting that day came to the uh, place that day and somebody came and told me uh, that madam do you know the gossip that is going around i'm like what is it they say ah we don't they see all since we just they wonder which kind of wife he married. Oh, more. We know if he put hand here because the woman <laughs> did. <laughs> and when the person said it, I laughed. I'm like, what's that? He said, eh, eh. That they said no hope. That they were, some of them were like eyeing him and doing like notice me. But the moment they saw me, ah, no, no, no. This one day. This one not complete. Nothing. No option. So it's, it's very important we understand all this. At the end of the day, it goes far for us in what we do. You understand? So, pastor, mm. as a pastor, mm. you meet people that have challenges. I don't want to say there are two. I don't want to say there are ten. You meet loads of them. You give advices every day. You cancel a lot of them. Some might work, some might not work. Definitely, because human beings are just different in their own ways. Today, somebody is going to be inspired by what you say today. I would like you to take our time to talk to not just the woman, also the man. Because they've heard from what you have said, your practical thing you're doing in your house. But obviously what works for you might not work for the other person. But I want you to give a general advice coming from a man of God. You understand? What is expected of a man? What is expected of a woman? And do you encourage breakup in marriage? We will start from there. Do you encourage breakup in marriage? Do you advise divorce? Do you advise they should go separate way? Then now, what do you think that we need to do to get it right? Because we need to stay married. Okay. I'm not an advocate of divorce and I don't like it. So I always want my viewers to understand that. All right. Thank you for... Yes this particular question because if you watch a whole lot of, a whole lot of Christian marriages now, yeah. there are problems everywhere. The rate of divorce now is increasing. But I see divorce as whatever that leads to divorce is simply lack of management. Okay. Because there is no crisis that cannot be managed. There is no challenge that cannot be managed. So. If the two parties can manage well, can manage themselves, there will be no divorce. Okay. Personally to me, as a pastor, I don't encourage divorce. So we're on the same page. I don't like divorce. When you say, okay, let's call for separation. Personally to me, I don't like separation. You know, because there is no issue that cannot be settled. At all. There is no issue. At times, what makes issue maritally linger is when everybody is claiming rights, when everybody is pumping ego. No. 
What's that time? You have to throw away your right. You have to throw away what you think that you did and is right in order to maintain peace at home. For example, I usually use this illustration. There is a man like that that normally argues with the wife. The wife normally argues with him and the both of them argues together. And one day there was an argument. And what's the argument? A bottle of malt. The man said that this is maltex. The woman said that is not maltex. That this thing is Amsterdam. But the woman has come to learn per time that she doesn't need to argue with the, with the husband. So the husband now told her, this is small text. The woman was right. It is no more text. It is Amstel Mott. So the woman now said, okay, honey, it is more te- it is more text. So it's just that they put a <laughs> label of this in a bottle of Amstel. Just that they put a label of more text in a bottle of Amstel. That ended the, the argument. argument. Everybody was at peace. Everybody. You know, so when there are issues at home, it simply calls for management. Don't claim that you are the one that is right. No, let the both parties, if you understand, if you're very wise, you know that the devil is not happy when there is a happy home. So, what you need to do at that moment, if you're a man, you notice that see, 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 you have to go down and meet your wife and say, I'm sorry. If you're a woman, you notice so, 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 you have to immediately so as not to give any room. Okay. For the devil. So yeah. if we can manage well, there can never be any divorce. So you're, you're talk- automatically telling the viewers that they, we need to be good managers. Good managers for things to. And there were you mentioned you mentioned a couple of um, management section in our marriage. There were yes. a couple of them. This thing a you lot mentioned. Of management section. Um, I'll come back to you. You're a lady, and you're a pastor's wife, and so a pastor is so much on you, and you have kids. You're a mother as well, and probably there are other things you're doing. I just need you to speak to the viewers and I know encourage somebody out there um, to understand that it is working for me, which is you, it can also work for you. So just say something to them, especially talk to the women. <clears throat> say something to the women, My why they need to make it work. Okay. My advice to the women or to the ladies out there who are intending to get into a man's house or people that are married already. My advice is that the devil is not happy because you are you are married or you are getting married. So you need to equip yourself. You need to do some research. Know what will work for you. Maybe in terms of a... Because sometimes there are these uh, comparisons. Women trying to compare their husband to other people. That is the most because I, I, I know some of the people that has come to me. Uh, this, my husband is not doing like your husband. My husband is not doing like this. I told them that this thing is working for me. It should not uh, be the reason. Maybe. Uh, you, should not, you should not compare it. You should not bring it to the table want. as something that you start putting as a yardstick. That's what you're trying to say. Exactly. Because it works for the both of you, it might not necessarily work for you and your husband which is the truth because everybody have their own unique relationship i understand that so you're practically telling us that we need to prep ourselves we need to do some research we need to know exactly what we want so that when we see what we want this is for the young girls that are aspiring to get married tomorrow they need to know what they want so that when they see what they want they can identify what they want and for the women that are already there and secondly respect their husband Okay, so women should women should yes, respect, respect your husband. Know that this man is your head, because that is another challenge that women do pass through. They would like to show the uh, the the man that I'm also a woman. Being, that I'm your wife does not mean that you will treat me as a slave. You know, they don't see their husbands as the, as the head. But when you see your husband as the head, you have to respect him, because if you submit, it will be very easy for them to love you. Yeah, that's why to uh, say that you submit to the husband and the love, husband. Of, love your wife. For you, them to love, uh, I always tell women, see, 
this your husband that you are saying is wicked is not wicked. Maybe you are not doing something, something right. There must be something that is not, not doing exactly. That I love this particular point. There is something that you're not doing you're right. Not doing because I believe that every man is, is very calm. No matter, like I know my husband. My husband is this harsh type. Even some people will come and tell me, how do you manage this man? This <laughs> man, if you see him outside, if you see him, maybe they will be thinking that he is so harsh. But I tell them, see, this man you see here, if you see him inside, you won't believe what you are seeing. Because exactly. of, I've learned him, I've learned some of his likes and dislikes. So I don't go where he said I should not go. And you I don't cross boundaries. That's a yes. good one. I mean, women, we need to understand that, that men have their boundaries exactly. and that we shouldn't cross their boundaries. Let's try as much as possible, respect our men, and in return, like Bible said, love your wife i tell women if you want to enjoy that love that super love that undiluted love that love that is reality because some of us are just um faking love for each other but you will know deep down inside of, that's not what it is but if you must enjoy that natural 100 percent love that christ has promised us then you must as a woman respect your husband so that you get that undiluted love um, there's something we used to do in this show. Um, but we're going to go into that. But before we do that, we go just on a quick break. And I'll see you in a minute. Thank you. In a world where hunger prevails, the fate of the family rests on the shoulders of... I'm home! You wanna know a product that is satisfying. Mommy! Royal Oats is made from a rich variety of healthy nutrients to give you the very best nourishment. And it comes in different packages oatmeal flour, porridge oat, jumbo oat, fufu flour. Royal Oats, it's healthy wheat. Royal Oats, so delicious. Royal Oats. Oh, what a magical feeling. Royal Oats. Eat well, feel good. We're back, and there's this our tradition we usually do. I mean, nobody sits on this our hot seat and leaves home and leaves the seat without our little package. Here we have our little package, our tradition. It's the Home Builders Initiative Package uh, Pillow. What we use it to do is to tell our, our guests that you are a guest on this show and you have to continue to be a home builder for you to be here it means that you're a home builder madam congratulations because you're a home builder and this is for you please um, from us to you say something okay I want to appreciate uh, the home builders the home builders I want to appreciate the home builders for this opportunity. I am very, very grateful. We are very much grateful for this honor. I'm just saying that God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pastor, I know you want to say something. You want to say something. Pastor, I am going to ask, please, where are you going to place this, our pillow? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, you're not meant to sleep with <laughs> you. You're saying the pillow is small. It's not for you to put your head, Pastor. Pastor, because I want this pillow to be placed where you both see it. Okay. I know that you have a duty. Mm. It's just a reminder. This is something to remind you that you're a home builder and that you have to build lots and lots of homes. Yes. By the virtue of the call that you have, yes. people are going to come to you. So each day you wake up in the morning, I want you to see this. In the night, I want you to still see this. It just comes to you as a reminder that you have a duty to, I mean, discharge. So thank you for coming to this show. I mean, it was just like holding, pulling the monkey down from the tree. That was how I got you on this show, and I'm happy you were able to come. Thank you so thank much. You, yeah, and to my lovely sister, um, you're, I mean, you're amazing. In as much as it's your first time, 
Thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. We're going to do this more often. We're going to do this again, probably without Pastor, just women to women talk. And maybe sometimes, Pastor, we can also call on you when we need your, I mean, advice. Thank you so much for coming. Viewers, you can see it's a beautiful time with our Pastor, Pastor Rapoluchuku and Pastor Mrs. Rapoluchuku. It's, I mean, a wonderful time with them. I'm sure you're thrilled with all you have heard. Whatever you're going through, from the stories, you can see that you can always pull through. It doesn't just stop today. You need to make up your mind and say, I want to cross over, and you will definitely cross over. Thank you for watching. From us, home builders, it's bye-bye.